Welcome to WordCamp Toronto. I know half the day is gone, but you know, it's the first time you're seeing me, so uh, welcome. Um, do we have first time word campers? Nice. What do you guys love it? Or wow. right, you know, I, I got I went to uh, my first word camp as a presenter. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but after that, I was hooked and I started to look to see where and when the next word camp was to go. Because I I was just overwhelmed with the community behind it and the people that I met and uh, it's just been this great experience ever since so if you're loving what you're seeing today um, I encourage you to keep doing it go to every WordCamp you possibly can make connections talk to people because the WordPress community is amazing it's amazing um, people like me people like you uh, we love to help hey we love to help other people in the WordPress community and you reach out and because if we're helping you we're helping ourselves as well you know you may have a unique problem that maybe we've never even come across I am not a, a high-level developer by any means by any stretch of the imagination but if you have a problem and I can't help you I will get an answer for you because of the people that I've met uh, at WordCamp so I highly recommend um, go into every WordCamp that you can. Uh, Toronto is one of my favorites. I love coming to Toronto. I am not a Canadian. I, I am from Ohio. I uh, drove in yesterday and um, came here to do this. Oh, and to go to Nuit Blanche, but you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, right? I'm here. So thank God I'm not presenting tomorrow because, oh. <laughs> Oh, that would be bad. My face would be sliding off my skull and everything. So, um, come on. Oh, there we go. I'm connected now. Okay, so my name is Joe Rosa. And uh, as I said, I come from Ohio. And back home, I own a small uh, design studio called Trailer Trash Design. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, there is a story behind that. Uh, I love Airstream trailers. They're just cool, this retro looking thing that who wouldn't want to have, but uh, a dream is to get one and gut it and put my studio in it and work out of that. Just this crazy, funky, cool thing. So, you know, the, the old adage, if you have a trailer, there's always trailer trash associated with that. And then I got real scientific and just put design on the end of it, and that's my company name. So. Um, but what Trailer Trash Design does is uh, we're a small branding studio. We do corporate branding, offer the full gamut of design for clients. Whether you know we're starting a brand new brand from the get-go, or it's an established brand that's maybe looking to do a little bit of a rebrand, uh, we'll take that, go from start to finish, and everything in between. Website development, trade show exhibits, package design, anything that we need to do that's what we do so by virtue of that uh, WordPress came in to be a very big part of what happens and um, the one big thing that I love about WordPress is that we can do a website for a client and then turn that website over to them and they can have fun with it they can be involved in it they can update it they can keep track of it they can do everything they want with it so WordPress for, uh, for me is, is really kind of great that way because clients want to be involved now and it is the perfect tool to do that. But now what happens when you turn a website over to a client, you know, they're all attentive when you first do it, but then 15 minutes after you're gone, they're like, oh, what did he say? How, how, what? And you get the phone call, get the email, and that's good, that's okay. Uh, but the one big thing is, is like, Joe, uh, you're talking about pages, you're talking about posts, when do I use a page, when do I post, do I post to a page, do I, do I, I don't know, what, what? So I thought that a talk, a good talk, a good beginner talk would be the difference between pages and posts. Uh, we have new WordPress users here today, yes? Like really, really new? Nice, great. You loving it? You hating it? You love it? Yeah, shake your head this way. 
Okay, no, <laughs> we are at a word camp after all. Anyway, um, so this talk today is going to be, I'm going to demystify the mystery between pages versus posts. And I'm going to do that with the help of Scooby-Doo and the gang. We all know Scooby-Doo solving mysteries. Can't solve mysteries without Scooby Snacks. So, <laughs> grab yourself a Scooby Snack and send it on down the line. I hope there's enough. If there isn't, I, I apologize. Um, so, feel free to enjoy as we're going through. Um, going down, what's a post? What's a page? Do I compose a post? Do I compose a page? Do I post to a post? Do I post to a page? I don't know. These are questions that I get. And these are all very valid questions. So the one thing that I found with clients is that they get frustrated early on because no one has sat down and really kind of explained WordPress to them. They're like, here's your site. Boom. Go. Have fun. Or, you know, they forget. And people forget. We all forget how to do things. So. Um, the sessions that I do at different WordCamps are always kind of geared towards that new WordPress person. It's those questions a lot of people are afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. So I, I wrote this thing here. I, I, I wanted to make this so confusing. So you guys just take a second to read it. All right, hell with it. I'll read it. If I write a post and I want to post that post, do I post that post to a page? Do I posting to a post? <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. It just becomes so, so confusing. So we're going to pick this thing apart and we're going to solve. We're going to solve the mystery. So first clue about posts. Posts are timely. You're talking about a section of time, a little bit of time on your website, on your blog, whatever the case may be, you're talking about something that happened in a very short amount of time. And what could that, you know, what could that be? Um, Scooby and the gang hire a new mystery solver. They want to talk about that. So how do we do that? We put together a post, because it's a section in time that we're going to talk about. So as you put posts on your blog, I'm not going to say as you post posts to your blog. As you put posts onto your blog, they stay there in reverse chronological order. The newest first, and then it goes down the line. So that's why they're timely. The newest things are on top. The oldest things are down lower. You can always see those as you scroll, but the hottest item is on top. The least hottest is on the bottom. So. Um, examples of posts could be, you know, new hires, you got new products, you got a new service, or if you're doing a blog for a sports team, your son is on a, a flag football league, and you post that they just wallop their competition, that's going to be very timely for that particular day, for that particular game. Next week's game, it's going to knock that down. So uh, you could have events. You got an event coming up uh, at your school or at your church or at your, your organization, whatever the case may be. That event is only there for a short amount of time. Once the event is over, do we have enough? Oh, damn it. Sorry, guys. Yes. Can you fudge the dates? Yes. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll, we're going to go into the back end of a post and a page, and I'll show you. But you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and um, news in general. You know, if you have news, you have a bit of news. I, I, you know, I don't know what that. You want an award, or um, you're going to be on TV. I was interviewed for Channel 5 News, or you know, whatever. And then you could put that video clip on there. So keep in mind that posts are timely. All right, we're all good with post. Anybody got a question? Feel free to throw a question out. Yes. Maybe too specific, but if you're going to run a contest uh -huh. and you want to post, you know, hey, we're going to run a contest, stay tuned for clues, then you do a new blog post saying, here's clue number one. Yes. Is it better protocol to then do a new post that says, here's clue number two, or do you keep modifying that original post saying, first clue? 
change the post to say second clue, third clue? If I were doing it the, the way that I would do it, let's say we're into clue number five, uh -huh. okay? Now keep in mind, guys, that if you do a post, you can make that post sticky, which means that you post it to your blog, you can tell it to remain sticky, and it will always stay number one. That post will always be number one. Your newest post will then come below. But then the newest post will always be below that sticky post, and you can unsticky it any time. So we're on po uh, clue number five. And so I'm going to put a, a post up and say, hey, here's clue number five. What I would do, I would link that newest post to the previous post. Well, you could, I don't know that there really is an advantage to that, you know, but if you have a lot of content in between clue number five and clue number four, you know, then you're going to make people scroll through that. If you want them to do that, then great. If you don't want them to, I would just link it. Or we can go in and fudge the date. Um, but I would, I would do it to where clue number five has links to clue four, three, two, and one. That's the way I would do it. Well, you know, content is key. You know, it's, it's, I mean, you could have the, you could post a bazillion times, and if your content is crappy, then it's not going to, you know, it's, it's, not, it's just not going to, if it's not relevant, it's not going to be up on, your, on the search engine. So I don't, I, I don't know if there's a real good answer to that. I don't, I don't know. Um, so as I said, uh, posts are kept in reverse chronological order. Okay, we're good? Moving on. All right, another clue. Pages are static. Pages are in your navigation. About us, contact us, products, things like that in your main nav. Pages are static. They don't move. They stay there all the time. You can add pages. You can take pages away. You can take those things out of the navigation. But for the most part, pages are static. They are there. They are informational. There are things that people will constantly look for, like your address or the map of how to get to your place or something like that, your menu, things like that. So um, the gang has hired a new hire. Well, the gang has their bios on the About Us page. Everybody has a bio. That information stays static. It's not changing. Yeah, it changed because we hired someone. You got that change, but once they're onto that page, that's going to stay the same. You know, now you can update, of course, you can update the information and all that stuff, but that page itself will stay there. Um, so pages are there to gain information. Your basic company information, your organizational information, whatever you want that page to be, pages remain static. Is that cool? Everyone's good with that? Twitching your fingers back there. All right. Um, so examples, I mean, it's the basic stuff. You know, the about us, contact us. If you sell products, things like that. If you have uh, a party center, you, you might have a calendar page on there that has a calendar listing of all the events that you're going to have. But those pages will always remain the same. It's, that's the way that you differentiate. Posts are timely. Pages are static. So more clues. Zoinks. Um, posts are timely. Pages are timeless. OK, it's another way to look at it. Timely versus timeless. Posts are social. That, that's kind of important. When you post something, you're telling people about it. You're being social. You're putting it out there. And you can link those posts to all your social media channels. And that's a whole other discussion. Uh, but posts are social because you're out there, you're telling someone what's going on with you or, or you know, where you've been or what you've done. Uh, posts can also be categorized. Now, this is something that, that really throws a wrench into a lot of people's uh, whole WordPress understanding thing. You can have different categories for posts. Um, let's just say... Uh, 
I make hammers. I produce hammers. Well, there are different kinds of hammers. There's carpenter hammers, there's roofer hammers, there's sledge hammers, there's small sledges, large sledges, 12 pound, 50 pound sledges. Those are all categories of hammers that fall under hammers. So if you put up a post that talks about the new carpenter hammer that I just developed, well, I don't want that carpenter hammer to go into the sledgehammer category. I want it to stay in the carpenter category. So you write your post, you compose it, and then you're going to have a list of categories that you've already set up on your site, and you check, I'm going to put that new carpenter hammer in the carpenter hammer category. So when it's posted, it's going to go in there. It's going to be nicely categorized. It's going to show up on my blog, just like all the rest. But if someone comes and searches my site now for carpenter hammers, it's going to go, it's going to come right up there. It's going to be right there on the top. Does that make sense? Categorize. Think ahead when, you, when you're ready to start posting on your site. Think ahead of categories that you can categorize those individual blog posts in. Hi, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, posts are included in an RSS feed. You update your blog. If someone subscribed to your blog via uh, RSS, it will update them. It will notify them that you've made a change. You've updated your blog. Pages do not. Posts do. Okay, so that's another aspect of that social thing going on. You've told somebody and now they've subscribed to it. Like, bam, they've been updated that you've done it. So um, pages have a custom template. Posts do not, for the most part, I mean, you can have a, a tripped out blog and all this stuff, but for the most part, pages have a template that follows your site template. Posts do not, because you're posting it to a specific page. That's kind of a little bit confusing there, too, but um, it, it, your, your, your post is just a bunch of information that you're going to post onto a page that's following a template. So, I'm going to get brave here. I never go live uh, and look at things, so hopefully I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot. But I want to show you guys what, uh, for those of you that don't know, what it looks like on the, on the dashboard part of your site. So bear with me for a second. All right, so um, this, is the header for, this is the header for my website, okay? This is me. So um, for you new WordPress users, you all know how to log into your dashboard. Is there anyone that doesn't know how? Because I can show you that. We're all good that way. OK, good. So let's just pretend that now I have logged into my dashboard. And this is what it looks like. Um, for those of you people that you know, are all about stats, my stats suck. They really do. Um, but I really don't care. You know, I use my portfolio or my site for my portfolio, that's it. If it drives traffic, great. If it doesn't, OK. So here we are, the dashboard. Uh, if there's something on here that uh, someone wants to touch on that you don't quite understand, throw it out and let's, you know, let's talk about it. Uh, but here's your post. We're going we're gonna to compose a post. Um, here is the thing for your pages. So we're going to start with posts first, and we're going to look at all posts. Come on, there we go. So here is a list of posts on my site. And as you can see by the date, I don't update my site very often uh, because I'm busy doing other people's sites. They come first, they pay the bills. So um, this is what a list of site or posts looks like in your dashboard. And you will have this as well. The more you do, the more pages you'll get. Um, you can scroll down and you know if you had multiple pages, it would show up down here, or you can have it just one big list. So you can, like this top one here, I have saved as a draft. So you can go in, you can make a post, and if you're not quite ready to post that post, you can save it as a draft, come pick it up later. It won't be published. Yes? If there's any interruption, let me know. But I, I'm, I'm wondering about a little, a little bit more context setting. When we talk about pages and posts, are we talking from a WordPress point of view or a site visitor user point of view? Do you know what I mean? 
WordPress. Yes, WordPress. So, um, so, so we're talking about it from the, the technical, the technical point of view, not not the user experience. Point of right. View. Right. And then when you talk about posts, if you post versus a blog, like if I have a blog page, is that posts? Is that yes, a your blog is a collection of posts. That's, that's basically what it is. Your blog, here, hold on. Your blog, which I call a bulletin board on my site, is a list of posts. These are all posts that I've put onto my blog. Your blog is the holder for all your posts. Is that? Okay, so if I'm going to do a post instead of a page, I go to, I go to, sorry, the, the blog, the posts sit under the blog nav in my navigation. The blog is a page if you post on a page. Yes. See, this is where the confusion always comes in. Your, okay, your blog, your blog is a page on your website. But your blog is the holder, it's the collector of all your posts. So when I'm going to go do a new post instead of going to the page, I go to, I go to that page, I go to my posts. Depending on what you want that to be. Now, if you want that information, if you want to post that information onto a page that remains static, you're still posting, OK? But it's going to remain static. It's not a moving thing like on your blog. It's not a timely piece of information. The, the, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's crazy. Um, go ahead. So another way of looking at it is if you have a category called blog. Yeah. I, I kind of cringe at, but okay. Um, but basically, you're not actually creating a page. Your page it is a page in WordPress terms, but think of it as a category archive. So it's a bunch of stuff that is built usually on a category. You're not even at navigation yet. It's a long story short. It, it's it, it's a. Uh, it's a crazy it's a crazy thing. Um, okay, so let's just say, all right, let's just say we're going to call pages pages, and things that are on pages do not change. Okay, let's just say that. But on this page that does not change, you can post new information on it. Okay, but um, oh hell, it's it, it's really kind of yeah. Do it, throw it. That works. It's perfect. I'm going to steal that like you don't even know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a perfect that's a perfect analogy. That's yeah. So um, as you create posts, this list of posts is going to grow. The newest one on top. Oldest one on the bottom. Now, you asked about fudging the date. Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you how you can do that. Can you also ask the system to post at a later date? Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So over here. Because 2 o'clock in the morning is very early. Yeah. Yeah, over here, or I'm here on the right is where you can save your post as a draft. You can choose it to publish over here. I'm over here. Um, you can control what you're going to do with your post. So if you're not quite ready to post that post yet, you save it as a draft. You can come back to it later. Um, you can, it'll tell you the status of it here. So right now I have it saved as a draft. Here I can um, 
if, if I needed to have it approved by an editor or something like that, I could mark it as pending review. Okay, so if I wanted to publish it then down below here, whoops, not that one. Um, this right here you preview or you can hit publish down here. You hit this guy, as soon as you hit publish, it's live on your blog. Doesn't mean you can't take it off, but it's live on your blog. All right, so. Um, change the text to I'm sorry? So here's where you can change the date. You can set any, you can go, you can change it, and once you change it, it will. Now, what about the, 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 what does the server say we got? Universal, or like if someone were to look, let's say in Australia, to a post that I've done today at 12 o'clock, will they see it in their own time zone, or will they see it in my time zone? Server time zone. Whatever your local server time zone is, what, is what control is going to get published. Yeah, but where I said it there, it's going to be what I change. Your server's time. Well, but you set your, you set your site up to your, your, your time zone, you know, your, whether you're Eastern or you're Central or whatever. So if, if I post this at 1 p.m. Eastern time, right. it's going to post it at 1 p.m. Eastern time, regardless of what time it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, some people will have their blogs set up with permalinks <coughs> that have the date associated with. If you go into a post and then change the and backdate it, does it change the permalink, or is it still keep the old permalink <coughs> and the date is just reflected in the actual blog um, header? Well, that's a damn good question. I don't know the answer to that. Shanta, do you know? I don't know. I believe that one before you publish, it will change it for you. But because you've set it up as a permalink, the link is already out there in the universe. If you're trying to update it after the fact, after you publish, I think it keeps the original link. Unless you manually go in and edit it. Okay, all right. There you go. So, um, so now we can, we can, Okay, so, um, yep, are we, are we good with, like, the, the list of posts? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, we're supposed to, there we go. Anybody have a question about this? Yeah? Say, where is the, when you save your draft, then where is, does it say, like, say you want to just repost and you want to schedule them for this week and next week and the week after, where is that? Oh, that was, okay, that was right where we were at. So we're going to say WordCamps, why do I love them? I want to um, I want to post that, um, you know, like say we're going to do it next week. So you come back down here to publish immediately, and then you can set that right here. You can set the day, the time, everything right there, and then it will publish it when that time comes. So if you set that date back, then it shows up. Correct. You can, yeah. you can use that on a published post to change the date associated with that post. You can backdate things. Um, I, I, I took the first magazine to what magazine? And I wanted to backdate things to past issues that were transferring online, and it just changes your archive. Mm. That's the way it goes. Mm. All right, so if we were wanting to make a new post, it's very simple. and. When you, when you make a new post or you make a new page, it's all pretty much the same. You follow the same kind of thing. So um, pay, no, pay no attention to this. I, my, my site is, is driven by the Divi theme from Elegant Themes. Um, but to make a post or to make a page, it's the same thing. So you have a title for it. Uh, this is a new, new blog post.
okay? Well, I type well. And then the information that you want in there, you put in here. Okay, so this is going to be my blog post, and if I wanted to put some media in here, if I wanted to put some picture, are we all familiar with how to put media into a post and stuff? Yeah. Okay, good. So I would go ahead and do that. When I'm happy with it, then I would publish it, or I would schedule it. Um, or if I'm not ready, I'm waiting on a photograph or something to come, I'm going to save it as a draft. When I have that photograph, then I can drop it in, I can publish it. So I can... Uh, publish this post and we'll see what kind of disaster this thing is going to look like. So here's my blog and if the gods are with me, here's my new blog post. Okay, October 3rd, 2015, new blog post this is what I just put in there. So, so We have, uh, we, if we have time, we can do that. Uh, right now, I'm going to keep going because I'm not quite done yet. Um, so back to here. We've published a post. We're good. So this is on my blog, not on a page, although my blog is a page, but I posted it to my blog. So if I'm going to create a new page, it's very similar to creating a new post. I'm going to look at the pages on my site, which aren't very many. This is what I have on my site, my about page. My, these are parts of my um, portfolio and my welcome page, contact page. Uh, I do a lot of green environmental things at home. Um, so I have a page on my site for that. Uh, but if you wanted to create a new page, it's just like creating a new post. We're going to add a new page up here at the top. And we're going to have that same window come up. And then whatever I want to have on my page. So again, just like the blog post, put your information, you can put your media, you can do everything. And when you publish this, it will show up in your navigation once you add it in your menus. Okay, so that's a kind of a topic for another thing. If you guys have questions about that, I'm more than happy to ask, answer those afterwards. So going back to the pages and the, uh, the pages and the posts, if you want to edit, you can edit by going into the actual page or the actual post and edit within. You can also do a thing, the quick edit, if you aren't familiar with that, this is somewhere too that you can change the thing, you can change the date, you can change the schedule, you can make pages password protected by adding a password into your thing where someone needs a password to get into that page. All pages can be password protected or just certain pages. If I post client work on here and I only want that client to see it, I can put stuff onto that page, give them a password and they can see it. You can um, edit your posts the same way, the quick edit way, just like this. So that's another place that people get confused because pa uh, pages and posts are very similar to the way they act, the way you make them happen on your site. It's just really the end place where they go. That's the thing that gets people, where do they go? Where do pages go? Where do posts go? So um, any questions on this? Anybody have anything? Awesome. So let's try. Yo, oh, I'm sorry. I'm s yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could have, you can, you can have in your navigation, you can, you can actually have categories in your navigation for your blog posts. Okay, so if you have three different categories, A, B, and C of your blog posts, and you've categorized all your blog posts, okay, to A, B, and C, some might cross over, some might have all three, but you can have in your navigation 
categories, like with a drop down that could have A. And if you click on that link, you'll get all your A blog posts. And they're all categorized right there. And then if you click on the link for B, all your B posts will be there. So you can categorize, you can organize them that way. All right, does that answer your? A little bit, yeah. Okay, why? I mean, Yeah. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, you want to make a static home page. Yeah, you want to make your static home page, and then you want a blog page. Yeah. Okay. Let I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that. So in your settings, um, over here, we're gonna. Um, Right now, the way you have your site set up is your, your thing is right here, your latest posts up here. So that's why your posts are showing up on the page when you hit it. So what you want to do is you want to create a page, a separate page that's going to be your home page. Generally, that home page is going to have a whole lot of static uh, information on there. It could have a feed for your blog on there. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to have static information. So then you want to create another page that's going to be your blog page. It's going to hold all your posts for your blog. And you're going to call that something. Like I call it a bulletin board. You can call it the blog. You can call it rants. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and it's going to show up here in this list of pages that you have. So you know that you want your blog page, like in my case, I want it to be the bulletin board. So I'm going to choose that. So now what's going to happen when you save your settings, you're going to have a page, your home page, a static page. You're going to have your blog page. And that's where all your blog posts are going to go. So people won't see those when they land on your site. They'll see your home page, and then they're going to have to click to see your blog page. Does that make sense? OK, yeah. You can, um, by categorizing, yes. You have, to, you have to make sure that you're categorizing them because not everyone's going to search um, your site for recipes. They might want to search for your kid stories. Mm -hmm. you know, so when they do that, they're all going to be categorized as kid stories. And your recipes will all be recipes. So it'll still be one? It'll be one blog. Yeah, OK. Yeah. And then you can go from there. Yep. OK. So how would you create pages that OK. It's a good question. Um, the way that navigation is set up now is through uh, menus. And at menus, you find menus in appearance and over here in menus. So as you create pages, the way you do it, you create a new page. You can create 50 pages if you want, all up front. And they don't have to have anything on them, no information, anything like that. But you know that you want these pages to show up in your navigation. So you go through your list here. These are actual pages, OK? So I can check these, or I can leave them unchecked. And now this is what my navigation looks like in menus. So let me, let me show you. This is my actual nav here, OK? Right up here. So I have the welcome page. I have the about page. Here's my portfolio with the sub pages and the bulletin board. So going back here, this is what it looks like when you create your menu. So you're creating the menu for your navigation is what you're doing. So by indenting these pages, these are sub-pages of my portfolio page. And you drag and drop these in any order that you want. And then you save it, and that's the way your navigation will show up. OK? Does that make sense? So um, if you want to show categories in your navigation, in your main nav, like you know, up here, A, B, C, 
No, no, you're, you're, no, just, yeah, you need to calm, okay, just calm down here, because we're getting a little wiggy now, so, um, we can, with your list of categories, you create your list of categories, if you come down here to categories, all your categories will show up in a list, just like the categories did for your pages, so you check those, Check or uncheck whatever you want to put on there. Check and then you add to menu and they will show up as nav items in your menu. So if you want to have, if you want to have a page that has a submenu of all these categories, then you can do that. Now you can also, since we're talking about this, we can also go in and we can do a list of links in your navigation to custom links. By adding a list of links into your thing here, you just create them right here. You can add these links as well into your nav, so when you roll over it, you have a, li a live link that will link out to wherever you want to go. And, so, you, and you can set it to open in a separate window. Of course. Yep. Yeah, so it, let's just look at one of these. I'm going to show you this welcome page here. So you're here in your menu, and you can give it title attributes, you can do all this stuff. You can change this. Now, when I originally created this page, it's welcome to the trailer park. If I don't want that page to keep that name, I can change it here. My original page name will still be welcome to the trailer park, but now I can make this say welcome. <coughs> it can just say welcome. So I take this other stuff out, save it, and now that link in your nav will now say welcome. So you can change actual page names here. Does that make sense? I missed the thing you put to get that. The little arrow thing here. Ah, thank you. So you open that up. Now, also from here, you can remove it from your nav. Just remove it. Psh, gone. Uh, you can move down. And like I said, you can, you can grab a hold of these guys, and you can drag and drop them wherever you want. And then you save it, and that's where it's going to show up on your nav when you refresh your page. Correct. It just changes it local. In the nav. In the nav. Yep. Okay. So, and then, well, since we're here, you can, you can uh, make this nav, you can make this main nav show up as your primary nav. You can make it show up as your secondary or in your footer just by changing the settings here. So, and you can make multiple menus. If you want a special footer menu, then call it the footer menu or call it whatever, and you make a special list of uh, links for your footer menu, and then it will show up at your footer. So just call it, you can have a bunch of different navigations in here. Is that cool? We're good there? All right, so I think, um, based on that, that I am, I am done. So if you have any questions, I'll be around the rest of the afternoon. Uh, I, I, if you have a quick one, I can take it, uh, but I, you know, we got to go. We got to go eat. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>